Cahill's long throw. Goalkeeper's come. Has it got there? Harry Kuehl. And then pumped home by Tim Cahill. Australia have done it. Six minutes to go. And it's a landmark moment for Australian football. So, Tim, when you, when you look back on this moment, uh, you must have felt an immense sense of pride walking out. I know you were on the bench that day, but, you know, Australia finally at a World Cup after 32 years. I think you're right. You know, it was, um, it was actually one of the best days of my life and also um, a mixed emotion day because, yeah, I was on the bench. That's one part of the story, but... Um, I was also the night before, you know, fixed to start. So when you got to warm up and you got to see the crowd, it was like we were playing at home. Um, there was Aussie songs going on, there was a buzz, and there was also the pride of <clears throat> being there after such a long time and how hard it was to get there that you had to overcome them emotions of wanting to start even though you thought you were and then having to sit on the bench and, and, and to keep it all inside. So it was, it was a massive, massive learning curve in my career to you know, um, feel so many emotions for not only myself, but more importantly, the country. So Hus had told you you were starting the night before? The night before, even in training, I was, I was locked on. Um, I remember doing analysis work, looking on the defenders, looking for the spaces, set plays. I remember saying to Luke Wilkshire, uh, who was my roomie, how I was going to score, what I was going to do. I remember dreaming the game over in my mind um, most of the night. That, that As a footballer now looking back, that's what I've done my whole life, but there, that's what every kid dreamed of in the back garden. And, um, <clears throat> it was probably one of the you know, most shattering moments the morning of being called downstairs. Um, it was Arnie that someone called up to my room and to tell me that uh, I wasn't starting. How did you react? Were you angry? I was in tears. I was in tears. But it's only natural. And the thing is, because we had such an elite group of players, um, you could actually say, because Johnny Aloisi was sitting next to me and Spider, few of the other boys it was a pleasure to sit on the bench but this group of players at the same time had so much fight and pride inside that um, this opportunity to play and win and the caliber of players we all knew that we could add a spice to the game and um, it was why we were so good it was why we went so far because at that time I was I was crying inside myself I was the tears were showing when it happened and I took it on the chin don't ask me how, but I thought of the country, I thought of my teammates, and I also thought that, you know, I think the selection was to start Harry. He's one of the greatest players um, in the national team, and he was someone I looked up to. You know, he, he was all our idols growing up as a kid, so it was the first time ever I've sat in the back of a team meeting um, because I didn't want to sit at the front or in the middle and let the boys see me crying. Uh, and I was, I was in tears at the back while they were naming the team and um, everyone knew something was up. But, you know, you have to get on with it. It's probably, it, it is the best and biggest lesson I've ever had in football. I think I remember saying when you, when you came off the bench, because obviously <coughs> Australia were trailing and there wasn't too long to go. And I said, I hope he's had his wheat bix because, of course, you had a, a sponsorship deal with wheat bix at the moment. I mean, that couldn't have been written any better for you. That that was your moment, wasn't it? And, and we'll see the, the the second goal obviously shortly. But just just describe the feelings when you see that ball nestling in the back of the net because it still has to go through a lot of players' legs as well, doesn't it? To to even get there. I've played that goal a million times in my head as a kid. I played that goal. Maybe it wasn't. Um, that good the way it went in in my mind it went in a lot better like the second one did but I, 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 I dreamt about that I, I visualised it um, and I visualised the feeling of scoring in a World Cup Look, and when you see this as H boom, you swung at it it's fallen 
and I've just hit it and it's hit the back of the net. Now it comes the boxing and um, I, even when I was celebrating here with the boys, you know, I was looking for the bench, you know, I was looking for some of the players that were sitting there. And, and, and when I celebrate, it's fire. Look, it's gone through three sets of legs there. Um, <clears throat> and it's just incredible now because I'm really proud of it now because I'm watching it and I'm appreciating it. Uh, now I'm watching, um, it just feels amazing. The, the second goal obviously is, is one that will also live forever really in the hearts and minds of, of Australian football fans. Have you ever, ever hit a ball sweeter than that moment? Cause they, they, and to be fair, the Japanese defence, they sat off a bit as well. They sucked they? back, they sucked back. They, they, they sat back because um, they were getting tired and also they were protecting their box. Now, anyone that knows me knows that percentages is I don't like shooting out the box. I think it's a waste because it's not my, it's, it's, it's not my, it's not my thing. Normally I'd get that ball open my body out to the left and play it out to a winger and expect him to hit me on the second phase. But when you look here and you look how they've sucked back, I took a touch, I've rolled it, I've set it. Um, here, took a touch, rolled it. And the goalkeeper couldn't see because of the player and I've given the eyes. Um, and it wasn't a hard shot, it was just more a cultured shot because I don't shoot hard. It's never been my technique. Uh, and, and they're the moments that define you as a player of what you practice. Um, this is probably something I'll do on the training pitch a hundred times, it might not happen, but when it comes to real life situations and games, um, I seem to hit them you know, well at the right time, but it's probably one of the greatest goals, you know, top five that I've scored uh, for the national team. And then there's just that wonderful <clears throat> moment on the camera where you, you just get mobbed by all your teammates. The bench runs down the touchline, the fans in the stands. You must have watched that a, a lot of times. What sort of a moment was that? Are you thinking anything in that split yeah, second? I'm thinking or is I've, it just pure joy? I'm thinking I told you so. I think I'm thinking I knew it. I'm thinking that's what I'm there for. That's what I've, look, you can see me screaming to my teammates. You can see them screaming to me. <clears throat> the best thing about our team is that we're all so humble that we don't say too much and we all look after each other and things like that but we really do believe in, in each other especially that group and we knew how good we were as players but not many players talked about themselves you know look at that goal from Johnny um, <clears throat> It's just incredible. We talked about how hard it was for us to go overseas at such a young age and apply a career um, and, and, you know, still continue year after year and trying to break the barriers to, to, to be recognised. And this was, I think, our reward for a lot of us um, internationally that we needed as players um, to step up to the next phase. That. Um, is not in the game now. You forget. It's, a lot it's of often things. forgotten that you actually claimed an assist as well as your two goals. Assist back then, no one cared about assists. <laughs> you know, that's something just come in um, since I've joined uh, the American MLS. You know, you get assists in basketball, and now it's so important. You know, it's so important in the game um, that it's evolved that way. And back then, I was the link man. I was the the glue between the strikers and the midfielder that could get space. And there you see Johnny, um, he never had anything else other than in his mind. He doesn't look to pass, he only looks to score and drive. And that's what I was laughing at yesterday because <coughs> he knew he was going to score too. And that's funny because we both said we were going to score and he deserved that because, and, and we deserved that. <clears throat> that, that, that moment. Look, it's, it's funny, Dukes is standing up there, but Johnny's never passing him the ball. It ended up in the right way. Uh, a fantastic day for Australia, the nation's first ever goal, first ever win at the World Cup Finals. You're right at the heart of it. Uh, I remember your camp was in Uringen, north of uh, Stuttgart. Um, I know you had another game against Brazil a few days later and then the match against Croatia, but uh, when you got back to the hotel that night, were you, were you aware of what you'd just done, what you'd just achieved, both individually and as a team, and did you celebrate or 
was it just about onto the next camp? Do you know, even in the change room, I didn't really celebrate. Like, you know, crazy, a lot. It was just, um, it was like we were driven into robots. You know, Gus, Johan Naiskins, a lot of the boys. And we had a lot of experienced boys that never really let you get carried away. And even when we went back to our base camp, you know, it's all about ice baths, recovery, treatment. I don't think we had access to internet. The computers were switched off. And it didn't really sink in. We did not see or hear the noises um, of what we had just done. You know, when you see the footage after on TV of Sydney, Melbourne, every single state in Australia jumping up in thousands of people in, in you know, congregating together in, you know, public places. We looked at each other like, you know, that we've just united Australia in a big way. Um, and we didn't, we didn't get it. No, we didn't. We didn't, you know, we, we just got three points in a World Cup in um, <clears throat> one of the biggest moments for us as a national team. And no, we didn't, we didn't take it in properly. And uh, it would be funny to see what some of the other players would say because it, it was, it was all business. Have you got any uh, mementos of that day? Do you have a, a photo up on your wall of you scoring that goal? I, I assume that's probably, <clears throat> you've had some big moments at club level, of course. Mm. That, is that the biggest moment of your career that day? Yeah, it's, it's definitely one of the biggest moments of my career. I've got those boots, I've got the jersey, um, I've got the tracksuit, I've got everything. I've got Brazil. I saw, I've got the Japanese jersey I swap, swap with plus my own. I've got the real Ronaldo number nines jersey from this game against Brazil. I've got everything from every World Cup. I collect everything. I'm the biggest fan. The last Confederations Cup, Asian Cup that we won, the last World Cup that I just played at. I've always learned that because it was so hard for me to get this um, and my parents and my family sacrificing so much for me to be here, I was the biggest fanboy ever in these tournaments. Uh, and you even see when I got subbed against Brazil, when the whistle blew, everyone's going for Ronaldinho, all these players. I'm already up and I sprinted towards Ronaldo number nine, the real Ronaldo, and I said, give me a jersey. I didn't say please or nothing, I was sort of like, and then we just swapped, like I'd forced him because I love football. I'm the biggest fan and um, I have one of the biggest collections ever when it comes to international domestic uh, mementos, like the boots. It's crazy, every single pair of boots, World Cups, but these, these games. Um, and I'll have to do some rummaging, but I know I've got it.